Frogs. Slippery. Odd. Fascinating. They summon the imagination, coercing smiles and curiosity. Let's see what we can find. All right, gastrofica. Hooked since childhood are herpetologists Ron Gagliardo and Joe Mendelson. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is a male um, horned marsupial frog, Gastrotheca cornuta. And this uh, species used to occur all the way from Costa Rica down into Ecuador. Um, it hasn't been seen in Costa Rica in almost 20 years. And uh, Not findable in Ecuador right now. Ron and Joe can't recall a normal day at the office. For the past two years, they've taken on a Herculean task, saving frogs from global extinction. The reports we're getting back on an almost daily basis are more dead frogs, more dead frogs. Identified in 1999, amphibian chytrid fungus is believed to have caused the extinction of over 100 frog species in the last 20 years. In my own experience, I would go to field sites that people had been to in the 50s and 60s, and I had their field journals. And I'd spend a week, two weeks, or a month there, and I couldn't find what they'd found. Your first conclusion, of course, is that I'm no good at finding frogs. And you finally realize, like, no, the answer is they're gone. Believed to be spurred by Earth's rising temperatures, the chytrid fungus has found easy prey in frogs. With an epidermis just one to two cell layers thick, the frog's response to chytrid, which attacks their skin, is to bulk up. Thick skin, but no longer water permeable, the frog becomes dehydrated and within a month dies. At its worst, we know this fungus is capable of essentially removing about 90% of the frog individuals from an ecosystem in the span of a month and a half or eight weeks. What it is capable of doing is absolutely catastrophic. If you think about the fact that this fungus can get around by a single zoospore, a microscopic zoospore, that all it needs is some water or a moist environment to survive, then we have a million different ways this thing can move from stream to stream. Without frogs to eat insects, the rise of insect-borne disease such as malaria and dengue fever is inevitable. Animals that subsist on frogs, such as snakes, bats, and birds, are in danger of extinction as well. Why can't you fathom the loss of large sections of an entire vertebrate group? It's because humans have never seen anything like this before. If you want to look for a precedent of this, it goes straight back in the, in the history of the planet and look to the dinosaur extinctions. Moving 30 kilometers a year in elevations of 1,500 feet or higher, chytrid has been found on five continents, including North America. With detailed documentation from Dr. Karen Lips, researchers have been able to predict its deadly path through Central America. Its next stop, El Valle, Panama. We called together some key people and realized, came to the conclusion, we had to very quickly do something very, very different because research wasn't saving the frogs. Ah, here it is, Buffoniformis. Oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. In 2005, Ron and Joe extracted hundreds of healthy frogs to bring to Atlanta, Georgia as a preemptive strike against extinction. Without a facility to house the frogs, the Panamanian government offered full support. El esfuerzo de colaboración con ellos eh, más bien ha sido de apoyo al trabajo que ellos están haciendo aquí en Panamá. Yo creo que esto sí podría ser un modelo para otros países alrededor del mundo. You ready for some frogs? Oh, hey, you ready? Always ready for some All right. frogs. All right. Capturing 20 males and 20 females from 35 frog species, these newly formed colonies encased in moss and deli cups arrived safely in the U.S. The job is to uh, learn how to live in Atlanta, learn how to eat in Atlanta, and then learn how to breed in Atlanta. A lot of people anticipated it would be a complete failure, that virtually all the frogs would die. We hoped for the opposite, and without gloating, we were right. We, they, the frogs are doing fine. 
To the unaided eye, this looks just like a, maybe a brown, slightly warty skinned bullfrog. Um, but this is actually one of the rarest frogs that is part of our project. What you're looking at here is one species that was in a group of 38 species. And by all our available evidence, the other 36, 37 are gone. This is our last hope of saving a representative of 38 species at the same time. This is it. This is one of the two or three top five species from El Valle that are going to be gone off the planet, possibly within months, that we really need to reproduce. And we haven't quite figured that out yet. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> That's your next. <laughs> and they are working on it. Eight species have bred under the watchful care of Ron and Joe. The metamorphosis that some frogs go through, from tadpole to frog, is a marvel to view at any age. This tadpole here is about a month old, and as you see, doesn't have any hind legs yet, just some very, very tiny initials there. And this tadpole here is uh, about 45 days old. And then this guy here is about 60 days. And that's about the time they usually like to leave the water, at least this species. An avid crawler, this brand new amphibian will someday look like this, a mature lemur leaf frog. They can drop their eye straight down. That's different than blinking. They actually take their eye and drop it straight. He just did it, he just did it. And what happens there, there's no bone underneath that. So it actually bulges down into his mouth. Show me another creature that swallows with their eyeballs. I don't think you can do it. Hola, Edgardo. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Está Ron? A few weeks ago, we received word that the chytrid fungus has reached El Valle, and our field guys there are starting to find dead frogs. Oh, that frog's sick. Yeah. His skin's a little messed up on the back there. You feel sick. You feel horrible. You know, I, we don't want to be right. Scientists are all about making sure we're right. We don't want to be right, and we were right in this case. In order to assess the damage and to save the remaining frogs, Ron and Joe head back to El Valle, a place just 10 months ago was teeming with frogs. The one thing that I'm particularly kind of worried about is do we have time to get some of the most critically endangered animals in that area to create a colony right there in Panama? I hope so. Still ahead. Ron and Joe head deep into the Panamanian rainforest, but will they be too late?